Greetings, accounting enthusiasts. Welcome to another enlightening module where we embark on a journey into the intricate world of accounting for asset. An asset, in its broadest sense, is a valuable entity contributing to the worth of an individual or organization. In the business realm, assets come in various forms, tangible and intangible. Properly managing these assets is key to maintaining a healthy balance sheet and ensuring operational success. Things will be clearer when we look at San Mart's balance sheet. This is what the balance sheet looks like, nothing out of the ordinary. Let's now begin by understanding the fundamental types of assets. They can be broadly categorized into tangible and intangible. Tangible assets are assets having a finite monetary value and they exist in a physical form. So cash, for instance, inventory is another good example. We have property, plant and equipment. All of these are examples of tangible assets. They, however, come with the challenges of storage, insurance and potential obsolescence. As we explore some tangible assets, it's crucial to grasp the concept of depreciation. And in order to understand the depreciation, property, plant, and equipment is one of the best examples. The concept of depreciation is an accounting practice that involves allocating the cost of a tangible asset, which is property, plant, and equipment in this example, over its useful life. Now, every asset, be it a machine or a building, has a finite period during which it adds value to the business. But depreciation ensures that the asset's decreasing value over time is accurately reflected in the financial records. So, for instance, on San Mart's balance sheet, we see a starting balance of 45000 but it does go down. As we move through the years, 45,000 becomes 44,500, then 44,000, and then at the end of 2022, this becomes $43,000. So it seems that depreciation is at play here. Every year, property, plant, and equipment value depreciates as we move through the years. And that's why depreciation ensures that the assets decreasing value over time is accurately reflected in the financial records now moving back to our discussion of tangible assets tangible assets they can be further classified into current assets which are all of these assets over here cash accounts receivable and inventory so these current assets like cash accounts receivable prepaid expenses and inventory are highly liquid and they can be converted into cash within a year. Fixed assets, on the other hand, such as property, plant, and equipment, land and buildings is another example. Think of these as long term investments. They have a longer conversion timeline. It will be very difficult to convert fixed assets into cash within a year. Now let's focus to intangible assets. One example on this balance sheet is goodwill. These are assets that lack a physical form but contribute substantially to a company's value. You can think of patents, trademarks, copyrights, and licenses. While not easily converted into cash, these intangible assets possess value and they contribute to a company's competitive edge. But intangible assets, just like the tangible assets or the current assets, and property, plant, and equipment are subject to amortization, which is a process of allocating the cost of intangible assets over their useful life. So for tangible assets, we have the concept of depreciation. And for intangible assets, such as goodwill, we have the concept of amortization. Now let's move on to the next tab. And over here, if we go all the way to the left, in this tab, we are going to unravel the nuances of depreciation. Think of depreciation as an accounting practice that is vital for reflecting the wear and tear on assets over time. So in this example, we have furniture and fixtures, we have office equipment, we have computer, we have the cost of these 
items on these particular dates and we have the depreciation for these items on these dates as well so depreciation for the year is nineteen thousand nine hundred and twelve dollars for furnitures and fixtures and in order to calculate the depreciation we have a look at the balance of the assets in 2019 we subtract the balance of 2018 and then we multiply it by the useful life or the average depreciation rate which is 10 percent in this particular example so we arrive at the depreciation of nineteen thousand nine hundred and twelve dollars again it's the 2019 balance which is in d10 we subtract twenty thousand dollars the 2018 balance from it and then we multiply it by the useful life which are the depreciation rate which is 10 percent in this case and then we divide it by 100 to arrive at the depreciation for the year of 19,912. We follow the same approach for the other assets, office equipment and computer, to arrive at the total depreciation for the year 2019 of $24,255. And then in 2018, same approach. Or the useful life is the same as in the previous year. So the formula is also the same and we arrive at the total depreciation of $22,050 for 2018. So this process of calculating depreciation ensures that financial statements accurately portray the value of assets, laying the foundation for sound decision-making. By calculating the depreciation in 2019, we are saying that there is an expense of $24,255, and we need to deduct it from the income statement to accurately portray the expenses for the year. Same approach for 2018. Now let's weave these numbers into the narrative of Sanmart's journey. In order to do that, we'll move on to the next tab, which is the income statement tab. So over here we see that for 2018 and 2019, we have the depreciation expenses that were calculated in the previous tab, $22,050 for 2018 and $24,255 for 2019. So by adding the depreciation expense over here, our income statement becomes a dynamic snapshot of a company's performance. And this kind of comes to life, the actual income that Sanmar generated throughout the years. The sales figure tell a tale of growth and expansion. The gross profit, a measure of operational efficiency, reflects the difference between the revenue and the cost of goods sold and the earnings before interest and taxes paint a picture of profitability and in order to determine this profitability we need to expense the depreciation impact in the income statement if we move on to the next tab which is the cash flow statement we see that there is a depreciation and amortization line item over here as well and this is within the cash from operations section of the cash flow statement. Sanmart's cash flow statement narrates a story of prudent financial management. Net earnings accompanied by depreciation and amortization form the backbone of operating cash flow. But as you will see, they are added back to the net earnings. They have a, there's a plus sign over here. They're not deducted like the changes in net working capital. And that is because depreciation expense is a non-cash expense. It's not like Sanmart has actually received a bill to pay the depreciation and amortization expense. It's just showing the impact. Depreciation is a non-cash expense as it just shows the deduction in your assets register without any money exchanging hands. In conclusion, Accounting for assets is not merely about numbers. It's about understanding the language of business. It's about deciphering the story that financial statements tell and use that narrative to make informed decisions. As you embark on your accounting journey, remember that behind every number lies a strategic move, a financial decision, and a commitment to building a robust and sustainable financial future. And with that, we conclude this module hoping this journey through the world of accounting for assets has left you enlightened and empowered. Until next time, happy accounting. 
If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.